everyone. Hope everybody is doing well. So as you know, immigration levels, which I will show you in a later chart over time, is now actually, believe it or not, negative. And it makes you want to ask, despite the fact that we are seeing shrinking immigration levels, which I'll show you in another video, perhaps, we are still very likely to see demographic change. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, take a look at what we have to offer. So let's take a look at this chart. In the US, the most common age for European Americans is 58, where Hispanic is 11, black is 27, Asian is 29. And there's just a lot, a lot of baby boomers who are European Americans. And then you have the echo boom of the millennials, which the, the peak is around my age, believe it or not, 27. And then basically it's continuing to slow down. And as you can see right here, I believe recently European Americans are now a minority. And then you can see right here in the Hispanic, it's 11 years. So this is from, I believe, 2018. You subtract that by 11, and that's 2007. So remember, that was a time when they were heavily coming into the United States, still right before the financial crisis, and they were having lots and lots of children. And many of those children were given through birthright citizenship. So the problem that I have with a lot of these people who are very outspoken against immigration and what have you, demographic change, American Renaissance, the alt-right movement. The issue with all that is that the real problem isn't so the immigration, it is the birth rates. And remember, European Americans have the power to basically gang up and to obviously say, hey, you know, we don't like this change. We're going to have lots and lots of children. But there's a lot of obstacles with that. Number one, the cost of living is certainly an obstacle. Number two, you've got essentially gender family destruction. Men and women are not what they used to be 50, 60 years ago. And that's a topic I'll talk about in the future. So this is the real issue with demographic change. And you can see here the younger people tend to be minorities. So what really needs to happen for the demographic changes to stop is there needs to be a baby boom of European Americans. And so even if we don't see a baby boom of European Americans with zero immigration, well, we're going to see a lot of these baby boomers pass away in about 30, 40 years as they hit life expectancy. And guess what? European Americans are going to be a minority. But then again, you also have to keep in mind that, well, there's going to be a lot of interracial marriage. That's something that certainly going to be difficult to stop. And not to mention, I don't want to be misunderstood. It's not like I hate minorities, but again, I don't like the push that they're putting this in, especially European countries. And I feel quite fishy about the way the establishment is obviously promoting it. So these are a lot of red flags. Now let's take a look at the demographic makeup of obviously Clark County. You can see here it's about 45% European American, although the data can be kind of misleading because that includes people like myself. And you can see right here, the decline has continued about 6% from the rest of the state of Nevada. But this is really, really the thing and I just wanted to show you real quick. You can see here for 85 and over, it's 74%, but for newborns, it's about 30%. So this is really, really the concern. So had the birth rates haven't really gone so much lower from the 1960s, we would have seen that number probably around 50, 60%, and the overall demographics wouldn't have declined as much. But then you look at Hispanic, how it starts very tiny on top, and then it expands over time. And then you can see here for blacks, it's more evenly distributed. 
It's more evenly distributed for Asian, but not so much for European Americans. And keep in mind though, that European Americans are about 24% of the students in Clark County Unified, but yet they pay, I believe, well over 50, 60% of the taxes. But oh no, minorities are always the people that have concerns. Now let's switch gears. You can see here, as you know, I really don't think I've had the opportunity to meet this person, but Roy Horn, which they have a side street of a freeway named after him, Frontage Road, has passed away from Siegfried and Roy. It was very, very devastating. Unfortunately, I missed the opportunity to see him considering he had that tiger attack in 2003. As you know, many states like California have become very, very oppressive over the years. And one of the things you are really, really starting to notice is that many companies have had enough. Now, the question is, why do they even have these companies there in the first place? That's one of the things. The employer that employs me actually has their headquarters in California as well. So you could see here, you know, they believe, oh, Silicon Valley is the tech center of the world, but yet they're trying to shut their operations as a result of the quarantine and Elon Musk is getting really, really frustrated. Now, like a lot of these people, I don't know if I can trust them. I've heard that Elon Musk got subsidies. Correct me if I'm wrong. We don't know. Maybe they're a phony alternative to the establishment oil companies. But then again, hopefully, maybe they will shut their plants down and move here to Las Vegas. It will certainly be a game changer. This is an article right here. As you can see, meat shortage pushes prices higher. Now, personally, I have not seen significant meat shortages over time in my local supermarket. My hope is that when a lot of people are going to these burger restaurants, they're not going to see, obviously, prices shoot up because, again, it's a double whammy effect where literally you're not seeing a lot, a lot of individuals having enough money to eat out. They have to eat on the go and then their prices are going up. But yet a lot of other prices like real estate, energy, etc., have actually been coming down. Now, keep in mind, even though we may see a lot of meat shortages i think this will be short term not so much long term in the matter of several several years and so one of the things is that this is the problem what's done for profit may not always be the best choice for society and keep in mind you have a handful of companies and a handful of slaughterhouses that control much of the meat market in our country and they're also arguing, well, because the unemployment benefits are so generous, people don't want to come to work. I don't know about that. It really depends on the state. A lot of states don't pay very well with unemployment. You can argue if they're very generous, they can put money into the economy, stimulate it, and that can reduce the chances of restaurant closing down and slaughterhouses being shut down and so forth, processing plants going away. So there's a lot of back and forth arguments. Now, if labor is really a concern, I think that, well, maybe there's a good reason why they're having visa workers. Maybe they can resort to automation. Maybe they can raise wages. And some people say, well, wouldn't that raise prices? Well, hmm, I don't really know because if really if steak really becomes expensive in price, people can buy other proteins. People can even resort to vegan foods. It's a really, really difficult discussion. Now let's go back here. Speaking of corruption and cronyism, I want to get back to this. The Secretary of State, Sagaski, and by the way, I don't trust a lot of these people from both parties. They're really part of the same team. They basically sided with the establishment to allow mail-in ballot. Folks, don't trust these people. A lot of these people, even though they're Republican or Democrat, they can be sellout. They're part of the same team. They're part of the same establishment, similar donors. And this article from 360 Daily Night provides some good points. Now, I'm not 100% sure if there's voter fraud really happening, especially from illegals, 
But again, it doesn't surprise me. I've seen a lot of good evidence against voter fraud. And you have to do what you can to spread the word. Don't trust these elections. Make change by organizing communities in your own street and demand and expose the truth, demand change without having elected officials to basically do it. Now, of course, the most important thing and the fishy thing is why was she the only Republican who won in 2018? And why hasn't the GOP fought back back in the day when they had control? Yet it shows that they're weak. They're not strong enough. This, again, is very important to know. We have a very high transient population, a high population that doesn't really participate. You know, they're busy getting drunk or gambling. I don't know. And I guess all of that explains why we get all the Harry Reeds and all this cronyism as we see. Where is the state GOP with all this? So with these elections not being reliable, I guess we don't really have elections. We have selections. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Please share this video. Please subscribe if you can. Take care.